Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today I'm going to actually review a movie that was sent to me by Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. So thank you, Warner Brothers, for sending me a review copy of Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind. And I will put a link down below to my reviews, non-spoiler reviews, of the first two Mortal Kombat Legend animated films. They were also sent to me by Warner Brothers. And like anything that gets sent to me for free, I like to share it with some of you guys, or one of you at least. So one lucky person who puts in this digital code, boom! Go to that website, put in that code, and you will get a copy, a digital copy of this movie to watch for yourself, which released a couple days ago on digital on October 9th and came out today as you're watching this on Blu-ray and DVD on October 11th. So yeah, please go check it out. And if you didn't win, I'm sorry, you know, I get one code and it only works one time. Uh, but if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, I would recommend you go check this film out immediately. Okay, so we're going to get into some mild spoilers. So if you want to go in completely blind to the new Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind movie, I'd recommend turning off now, go watch the movie, and then come back afterwards. Um, but if you don't mind mild spoilers, uh, you know, so, you know, keep watching and let me know your thoughts down below, too. But please go check this out, especially if you're a Mortal Kombat fan. You got to go check this movie out because um, when it was sent to me, I wasn't even expecting on getting it. I wasn't even expecting to get the first two when they were sent to me by Warner Brothers. I thought I would only get the DC stuff. So it was really cool that they sent me this Mortal Kombat, uh, you know, the three movies, because I ended up really liking them. The first one I had some criticisms on, but then the second one kind of fixed those criticisms. And I was like, wow, that's really good. Um, that they did that, you know, that it worked out that way. And uh, and then the third one, though, completely caught me off guard. This, actually, my biggest criticism of the live action movie that came out last year was that it didn't have a tournament in it. It was like a setup for the tournament. And I didn't like that about that movie. This movie is also not about a tournament, which I found really weird. I mean, they do kind of wrap up the tournament in the second movie um, and deal with the Shao Kahn stuff. So I was always kind of curious what this third movie would be about, but it is way different than I thought. It actually is more like a Mad Max movie, and I actually found that interesting. I was like, okay, I'm intrigued. Like, let's see where this goes. And it also features characters from Mortal Kombat that aren't, like, major characters. I mean, the villain is. Uh, if you're a fan of Kano, he's the main villain of this movie. And I know you're like, how the hell is Kano a main villain? Well, it's neat. It's really neat. And if I would say, I don't want to spoil too much uh, for people who don't know, but if you played Mortal Kombat 11 and beat the game with Kano, you might have an understanding of how he be, you know, he could be the main villain of this one. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool that it kind of ties into the game like that. Uh, so yeah, very, very clever. Uh, so if you're a fan of the Mortal Kombat games, I think you'll get a little bit more out of this movie than the typical, like, you know, uh, casual Mortal Kombat fan who maybe only watches, like, the animated stuff or the movies or TV shows, I think you'll get something more out of this. Uh, they do explain it in the end with, you know, by the end of the movie about Kano and how his, he got his rise to power and how he was able to take the Black Dragon, which is his organization that he worked for, and rise them up to be, like, these dominators in the uh, in the future, in this Mad Max post-apocalyptic future. Um, so I thought that was cool that they, they do answer that, but uh, it... it it makes a little bit more sense if you've played the games to where you can wrap your head around how that happened. Uh, so I thought that was cool. And then they used some really neat characters in this, like Cabal, who actually is a character that was in the live action movie that I didn't like. And they use him here as a villain. And I thought he was played really well here. And I thought his design worked really well for this post-apocalyptic world. But then there was also other characters like Kira and Kindra and Graji or Graji. Um, and Kenshi, the main character, voiced by Manny Jacinto, I've never, I think he was in like Mortal Kombat Decimation or one of those non-Mortal Kombat numbered games, like one of the spinoff ones, um, or Armageddon or something like that. He's like a blind samurai with a sword, you know, kind of standard tropey kind of thing. But what they, so I didn't know much about the character. I'm like, I think he, I think I remember him vaguely in one of the games. And I think he was put in one of the numbered games too. But, um... And I think recently as well, but I didn't really know much about him other than he was a blind samurai with a sword, you know. Uh, but in this, they actually tell his origin in this world where the Mortal Kombat tournament apparently ended decades ago. And now we're like 30 years in the future and Liu Kang is gone and, you know, all these characters that we know, Sonya, you know, Johnny Cage, like they're all gone. They're dead. And the world has kind of fractured and it turned into like i said a mad max where we get these little cities of people trying to still 
farm and, and stay alive, but uh, but Kano and the Black Dragons are going around and conquering everything and basically telling people, pledge your loyalty to us, kneel before us, kneel before Zod, and you'll live, but then you, you, you're part of us, but if you ever cross us, we kill you. And he's got some of the deadliest fighters, uh, like Tremor, who's a character that I believe was also in one of the games, but they kind of bulk him up, make him look like the Incredible Hulk almost. He looked like a scorpion ninja with lava coming out of him. And so that was pretty cool to see that character get used and be like a major threat for Kenshi in this storyline. And then Kenshi being someone who wants to be the best fighter in the world and kind of gets a taste of humble pie at a certain point, he finds a mentor uh, in the most unlikely of places. And I don't want to get too much into that, but obviously the title kind of maybe gives away that a little bit. And if you've seen the trailer, it probably gives it away. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I thought bringing in that character was really cool and kind of the journey they take that character on. And then I really love how that character's story uh, kind of goes into the third act where they bring back another classic Mortal Kombat character that I wasn't expecting. And that's all the hints I'm going to give. But that was really cool because there's this item that you see and you're like, well, what is that? What is that item? Like, how is that relevant to this character's story? And then they reveal that by the end and they and they bring a character back and uh, it's done really, really well. So for a Mortal Kombat story that had no tournament and was a Mad Max kind of, you know, nod, rip off, you know, uh, homage, whatever you want to call it, uh, reinterpretation, kind of that kind of story, but like mixed with the blind samurai thing who it's cool how they do the blind thing because it's kind of like Daredevil. <laughs> so it's kind of like they're pulling from a lot of things. But they kind of do a daredevil thing with this uh, Kenshi character, with his, with him being able to kind of see, but not really. Um, but it, it's neat. And actually, I found myself, like, I was like, all right, I'll put it on and I'll, I'll watch it because, you know, I got to do the review and stuff. But then I found myself, like, I was, like, doing other things in the first, like, 10 minutes of the movie. But I kept turning back to the screen. Like, I was taking notes. And then eventually what I ended up doing was just stop taking notes. And I just watched it. And I got immersed. And then by the end, I was like, Wow, that was actually really satisfying for a, a non-tournament, you know, Mad Max Mortal Kombat story. <laughs> like, I just wasn't expecting it. But it actually ties directly into the last game, in a way, uh, depending on which ending you get of the last game, like Mortal Kombat 11. So it, it ends up making sense in the realm of the lore of Mortal Kombat. And, uh, and I wonder if it's going to open more doors if there's other endings from Mortal Kombat 11 that they can do spinoffs of, because uh, I thought that was pretty clever, actually. I ended up really liking that, and I was like, huh, holy cow, that's like, that actually ties directly into Mortal Kombat 11. Um, so, yeah, kudos. So, anyway, uh, to the people who made this, I think Jeremy Adams was one of the writers, or was the writer. Um, I've seen his name pop up. He does some comic book stuff. He does a lot of the animated stuff for Warner Brothers. You know, he's he's can be hit or miss, but for this, I actually, I really like the script. Uh, for considering there was no tournament. I, I actually still, there was still fighting in it. There was still combat. There were still scenes with um, people in a ring fighting each other, you know, trying to serve Kano and Shang Tsung and the people that work for him. And you're like, how does Kano, how is he more powerful than Shang Tsung? Trust me, watch it. It's it's actually got a pretty cool twist, a couple cool twists in it. So um, I would say definitely pick it up. It made some bold choices, whether you agree with them or not. I think it still was an interesting story. And by the end, I found myself really locked in, and uh, and then I ended up loving the ending, and I was like, wow! And it, because it tied it directly into a specific Mortal Kombat game, made it even more like. So then it made me go like, wow, okay, so there's no tournament, but there was consistent fighting through it. There was progression. There's there's a goal of like who's in charge, like a Shao Kahn or you know Shang Tsung, where you have to work towards that character to beat them um, to save the world. So it still had elements of like a, a tournament it just wasn't a definitive tournament but it still kind of worked in this regard more so than i felt like it something like this worked or didn't work in the live action one where they was just all set up to a tournament this was like hey the tournament's done and this is the result <laughs> you know this like this post-apocalyptic world is because of the last tournament's ending and i thought that was clever so please go check this movie out and if you won the digital code uh, let me know down in the comments what your review of this movie is. I'd love to hear it. And then also, if you've just seen the movie in general and you want to leave your thoughts down below, I encourage you to do so also. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. So there may be spoilers down in the comments for people who are watching this. So stay away from the comments if you don't want spoilers. Um, but hopefully I didn't give away too much in this review. So 
uh, yeah, Jeremy Adams, who you wrote this, the, the directors, like, and the whole team that put this together. Um, I think you did a great job. The voice acting is really solid. Uh, actually, the director is Rick Morales, who's done, I think, everything from back to Batman Beyond and forward. Like, he's worked on a lot of Warner Brothers and DC stuff, and I've seen his name on a bunch of projects. So, Rick Morales, kudos to you, man. Uh, awesome work uh, directing this. Jeremy Adams writing it. Uh, David Wenham, uh, Manny Jacinto, uh, Yuri Lowenthal, and uh, actually Deborah Wilson from Mad TV. She does a voice in this as well, and it's, it's got a great cast. So, give it a shot. And uh, like I said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.